So all that hard work we did cleaning this place up is all for nothing so far because now I'm back to a big mess, but that's all disposable mess, which is a good thing. So continuing on with the stone forge we've been building, I want a substantial forge top for it. I'm tired. I, I was dealing with, you guys saw the last one, it was a thin gauge sheet metal and um, it just kind of sucked. It, it gave a lot, lot of flex. It actually bent underneath these a little bit. Uh, well, bent under there a little bit, so what would happen is some of the cold slide under, and it was kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. So, what we're going to be doing now, we're going to take this nice forge pot we built, what, probably two, three years ago on camera. We're going to take this, and we're going to insert it into this table. Now, I'm not going to cut all this down the length or size and all that until I kind of have this, this part of it where I want it. But what we're going to do, I'm working with what I have and what I can scrounge. So, this was a piece out of a scrap pile, believe it or not. And this was a piece out of a scrap pile. So these are both 3 8 plate steel. This is going to end up being 4 feet wide, 3 feet deep. We're going to, this lip right here, this is the front of the forge. We're going to extend this lip all the way down. I have another piece of this 3 8 plate steel off of the side. We'll make some strips to go on top of here, make them the same height as this. Go all the way around it so we have a nice work table, a good coal catcher on it, because that's always a pain in the asses when half your coal is laying on the floor because you didn't make these sides deep enough. Now this guy right here is going to be a little too deep for us to uh, really work the forge effectively so we're going to cut out part of the front here to accommodate for sticking pieces of steel in there and on the sides we're going to make some tool holders and stuff we're going to weld to it. Um, we're going to weld on here out of black iron pipe try to make it look nice plus it'll create a couple of handles for moving this thing I'm going to be a hammer holder on one side, hopefully, and tong holders on the other. We'll see. You guys know how I change my plans. It could be raining and my plans will change. But uh, So yeah, we're going to offset this pot. It's going to fit in right here on this seam, so we're only cutting out one piece of metal. should make it a lot easier. My inner lazy man's telling me that's what it wants me to do. So anyway, that's what's going on. I hope you guys enjoy it. I mean, hopefully this is the last time on this channel. Famous last words. Hopefully this is the last time on this channel you guys see me build another forge. Because we made a few of them on here. This hopefully will be the final generation, but this should work nice. This will give me a nice enough area to work with. It's, it's going to be nice. So anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you on the other side. All right, so we need 16 by 12 and a half, and that's a little bit oversized hole. That will make it much easier. That'll make it much easier for me to uh, put this together. I don't want to be fighting something that's. Oh, let's get to the sixth. Let's get to where I want it now. Yeah, and that's where mistakes happen. Double check. Tell you what, this stuff certainly isn't as clean as laying out woodwork and stuff, that's for sure, but I don't know, I kind of kind of got bit by this bug a little bit a long time ago, and now that I finally, what the hell do you want? This is the stray that has taken up residence here. So much in fact that we ended up getting the little bastard shots, and now he thinks he's my shot buddy. Friendlier in hell. And on the 11th, you get your balls chopped off. Cool. You and Gus, our little, our dog in this one. Going in for a twofer deal.
this guy here is just a little too long and I don't want it sticking out from under the forge when I have the blower attached so we're going to lop it off a little bit. The blade's getting a little dull. Still cuts, but getting dull. Alright, let's see what happens here, guys. Hopefully I don't regret tacking this, but I only did a few tacks for a couple of reasons. One, if you overheat it too much, it'll warp and everything on you, and my old steel loves to warp when you weld it. But I did make the hole just a little bit bigger. Get my fingers pinched in here. Oh, you jerk. There we go. Oh, look at that. That's almost sexy, people. When I say almost, I mean almost. Of course, this angle is not exactly square, but. I'm not too worried about that. Once that packs in with cold dust, that won't be an issue. But we are going to tack it in just a couple spots. I'm not worried about the welds breaking or anything like that. I more want to hold it in place good for moving it, things like that. I'm only tacking this in. I'd much prefer if I ever have to replace this thing or redo it. I don't want to sit here grinding for three days just trying to just trying to clean it up and replace it. Well I think we're gonna call this good for tonight. It's not even midnight. Crazy. But I've been trying to get more sleep lately because the uh, the lack of sleep was definitely starting to catch up. So, anyway, I like it. I like it a lot. So we're going to get some strips to go around the sides, same height as these, and go all the way around this thing. We're going to weld them in, but before we do the strips, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be drilling and tapping the steel top. This is 3 8 plate steel. Uh, it ends up being 3 feet by 4 feet. So I'll give you an idea how big that uh, forge pot is. I love that forge pot. I pulled the, now what the hell did I do? I pulled the uh, dimensions off of that, off of iForge Iron. I, I think there's some pretty good threads in there if you guys like uh, forums. Good place to learn and get advice, you know. But anyway, so I pulled those dimensions off of there. I built this out of, it's, it's actually 5 8 plate steel. And it's just held up phenomenally. We've done a lot of forging out of this. Well, there's a guy I work with who has one he built out of half-inch plate steel, and I believe he told me he's had it for almost 20 years, something like that. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what he told me, and he's never had any issues. Um, these actually moved, warped a little bit. The, uh, oh shoot, the um, angle iron, I can't talk. The 2x2 two two angle iron, but not bad. It's not deformed or anything. They've just kind of, and that could have been, honestly, it could have been from when I welded it up the first time, but... This top will be so much better than that sheet metal one that we had before. Now this right here, I'll have to go through with the flap disc, soften all these edges, everything up top. And actually I cut my arm loading this the other day. Um, so we got to soften all the edges. We don't really need to be reaching into the forge for something and, uh, you know, ending up getting cut doing it. Um, another thing we're going to be doing on these sides I'm actually going to make tool holders on the sides, possibly a couple on the front in these narrow places. And that's simply just for me to be able to 
on these it would probably be for whatever tools I'm using at the time and then the sides will be the backup stuff. It probably won't be enough over time because I've noticed with most blacksmiths they start with a couple pairs of tongs, a couple of hammers, and before you know it their walls are lined. Um, I say I won't be like that but I know me I'm also a pack rat and uh, if I'm junking up in New England this summer if we if we end up doing that I'll probably pick up tools as I see them. That's normally what I do. It used to be carpentry tools, hand tools, stuff like that, but now it's turning to blacksmithing stuff. But I am pretty excited about this. So this will not be installed alone. I can tell you that this is heavy enough as it is right now without adding anything else to it where it will not be getting installed alone. And before we cart it over there, I've got to get all the mess from the, the masonry work out of there, get the rocks back in the piles that they came from that we didn't use. Um, so yeah, I started to say we're going to be drilling and tapping around the edges of this, probably three this way, a couple that way, and three on that side. And what we're going to do with that, we're going to put some 3 h threaded rod down through this, and these are going to be tapped so that we can level this sitting on top of the stones, because obviously the stones aren't perfectly level, probably not even close. So looking at it now, there's there's a discrepancy there, but I figured there would be. I mean, you're working with natural stone, and unless I wanted to build up some massive mortar beds, chances of me getting it perfectly level were going to be uh, slim. There's people that can do it, but I'm not a mason. I don't even pretend to be. And by, to be honest with you, by the time I got down to that last row of rock, I was ready to be done with it. And I said, frig it, I'm just going to just gonna do what I'm doing here. So what we'll do is we'll use those rods to level this and then we're going to fill mortar all the way around underneath this thing get it in there nice and tight to the metal that'll do a couple things that will bond the uh, it'll pretty much give this a solid base to sit on and it will also keep the threaded rods in one place and then once we're done leveling we're done mortaring and all that and when it dries I'll zip the threaded rods off with the grinder we'll grind them nice and flat so we're not catching the uh, the coal tools and everything on them because that's a pain in the ass when you're scooping around and you got tools that keep catching on stuff these edges right here are bad enough but um, we only tack this because the mild steel she likes to likes to flex and move a lot when you're welding so we tacked it on this side I will get more tacks on it once we have the sides on here and it has something to support it and we'll hit it from the underside also a little bit but then we're going to grind these smooth because, like I said, I don't, I don't need weld beads for the, uh, the tools to catch on. But anyway, I'm really, really excited about this. This is actually starting to look like a shop. It's starting to feel like a shop. I keep making messes, but it's for a good cause now. It's not just throwing a bunch of shit all over the place to get it out of my way. We're still hauling stuff to the dump. I'm excited. I am super excited. The other thing to tell you guys before we sign off, I know I'm going on here. Um, I have two timber framing videos that just came up with a copyright claim for the music. That's back for probably the first 300 videos on this channel. I, I used royalty free music. It was unpaid subscriptions and once in a while it comes back to bite me in the ass. But to be honest with you, it's not a terrible thing. I re-edit the videos, sometimes I clean them up a little bit, put new music to them, and then put them back out so those videos kind of refresh a little bit. Um, I'm just letting you guys know that so when you see it, it's like, yeah, what the hell's he doing? This has been out for years, but that's the why of it. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.